it would disturb the symmetry, Randy. We wanted to see an African-American man, a white woman, and then the pasty white guy representing the pasty white guy vote. And there was no room to bring in another pasty white guy because then it would have been overly heavily dominated by pasty whiteness. And we couldn't have that. We had a symmetrical idea in our head. Anyway, I asked Dennis to come on the show and explain what the hell the Nevada Supreme Court based their ruling on. Uh, hi, Congressman Cassidy. How are you? Good afternoon, Randy. How are you? Well, I'm very proud of you. Uh, it was a really brave thing and a very democratic thing, I must add, to fight for your right to, to be part of the party. I, I mean, somebody should write a song. Meanwhile, yesterday night, it was like the most exciting thing in the world for me because 45 minutes before the debate, I don't even know who's in the Super Bowl. You know what I mean? I don't even know. So what was the argument made against you? What did the Nevada uh, State Supreme Court base their, their uh, refusal for your participation on? Uh, well, first of all, you know, just let me say thank you. And, and that this, um, uh, my fighting for this right isn't really isn't about me. It's about making sure that there can be uh, real debates and, and an open debate. And the Nevada Supreme Court accepted the uh, argument of NBC, which said that this is essentially a private matter that uh, I was trying to interfere in. It was a matter between themselves and the other candidates. And that uh, it, it, uh, and if I had a complaint, I should go to the FCC, they argued. On the other hand, they argued that uh, cable networks are not, um, uh, you know, are not within the reach of the FCC. So right. uh, there was some confusion about their argument. And we're going to, uh, I'm going to take further legal action on this. It's not going to, you know, matter for the debate. But the American people... Uh, you know, we we really need to fight for our democracy now. It's it's not just about it's not about me, but it's about whether corporations are going to tell us who our candidates are, whether uh, whether our votes are going to be counted, uh, whether uh, the elections are going to be bought, um, whether our civil liberties are going to be undermined, whether we're going to be continue to be in a war based on lies. And we're losing our democracy. I so, agree with you. Know, you. Listen to this. This is what strikes me as the most disingenuous thing of all. I, I, I suspected that the argument would be uh, that the local affiliate was public airwaves and that the cable is pay per view essentially and that it's private business. And yeah. so they did cancel the debate on the local affiliate so that they wouldn't ha you wouldn't have uh, any standing to go to the FCC. That's what they did. That, and I suspected right. that that was That's what correct. Happened there, But now think about it this way, and this is the way I was thinking about it all last night, too, as I watched the symmetry not be disturbed by, uh, you know, the Dennis Kucinich who would disturb the symmetry of, we're all friends here. We all, you know, whoever wins, it's all okay. Uh, I just thought it was gross. But So here we have the U.S. Supreme Court picking our president, and now we have a state Supreme Court picking our presidential candidates. How incredibly vile is this? Well, you know, I'm, um, uh, you know, I feel that I owe, you know, that, that I owe, that I owe it to everyone to just uh, persist in challenging this set of circumstances because here, here's, here's what's underneath it all. General Electric owns NBC. General Electric is involved in the manufacture of nuclear power plants. They have a stake in the outcome of this election because if someone's elected who favors nuclear energy or is not going to interfere with their workings, uh, their business interests are protected, particularly with respect to the issue of dumping nuclear waste, which is a huge issue in Nevada. Yeah, because uh, GE also owns Raytheon, which is a major defense contractor. Uh, they make money off a of war. So you know, here's a, here's a network that uh, uh, here's a, a parent company, which uh, whose broadcast interests are in direct position to uh, to take positions and to make policy that are consistent with the process of the parent company. And, and that is a problem. You know, that is a problem for our democracy. And so, you know, I challenge this uh, because it, it, where they're setting a precedent here where they're essentially going to be able to determine without any argument um, not only who they cover, because there is no such thing as equal time as far as they're concerned, right. but, but if, they cover, if they cover candidates and those candidates appear in the polls, if they don't cover candidates, the candidates don't appear in the polls. I know. They'll cover candidates who, who uh, don't appear, you know, visible in the polls, and, th and they'll cover candidates who, who correspond to their business interests. So what we end up with is a president who is, a, who, who is uh, screened, uh, vetted, and, uh, and propped up 
by General Electric, who, by the way, has contributed uh, uh, mightily, either directly or through NBC or through Raytheon, to the other presidential candidates. You know, this is a problem. <laughs> and it's a, it is a problem for our democracy, and we have a right to be able to have a, a, a presidential election uh, uh, without interference from corporate interests and without them trying to rig uh, a debate by excluding uh, point of view that otherwise wasn't heard. It absolutely wasn't heard. It was so uh, chummy last night. I thought that, you know, everybody would be cool with whoever won. They didn't really care. And uh, as far as the Yucca Mountain issue, it did come up. And what's really fascinating is that while everybody's screaming on the stage how anti-nuclear power plant they are, two of those three candidates continually voted for Cheney's energy bill and uh, voted to dump that waste in Yucca Mountain. And now they're totally against it. But, of course, their voting record doesn't match what they're saying. And right. wouldn't, well, it, wouldn't it have been interesting to hear you challenge them on that? Well, I was ready to do that, and yeah. I was ready to challenge them on their uh, continued support for the war. Senator Clinton and Senator Obama's voting record is indistinguishable I know. In, in voting to keep funding the war. And if you're opposed to the war, why do you keep funding it? I don't know anybody who would give billions of dollars to a cause that they were opposed. And uh, so we, we find that contradiction. And uh, in every area, I, you know, in health care in particular, uh, they're taking huge amounts of money from insurance interests, all three of them, I know. And, uh, and they stand for a continuation of a for-profit system. So, you know, where's the public interest served by having a debate which ends up being a monologue in three towns? Exactly. I mean, I was joking about it, you know, like how terrible it would have been to have you there because I believe in harmony, but where is, you know, the debate? What's wrong with a little contrast? What's... You know, since when well, is, is a debate a bad thing? Well, you know, the Democratic Party, here's something to think about, Randy. Uh, we contacted the Democratic Party nationally, Howard Dean, and asked, and asked him to support us in this. Didn't hear anything from him at all. Nothing. Uh, and here's the Democratic Tell him good Party job in Michigan, too. Well, well, just think about this. The Democratic Party has let a corporation usurp the debate, basically determine who the candidates would be in a, in a Democratic Party primary debate, and uh, and has uh, just said nothing about it, and that's a problem too, because uh, it says that our political parties have already accepted a subordinate position to these uh, huge uh, media conglomerates and, and and corporations, which include media uh, broadcast uh, interests. And and so once again, the American people um, have a, a, a right to know exactly how this system works, and if I'm able to do any service at all, it is through my candidacy to be able to explore. Uh, these uh, uh, these deep structural problems, which take our government away from us and, and enable uh, interest groups to be able to hold on to it steadfast using the power of broadcast media, which is really antithetical to the Federal Communications Act of 1934, which says that all broadcast licensees must serve in the public interest, convenience, and necessity. And I think by extension of that, it would relate to cable as well as to... Uh, of the conventional uh, network broadcasting. Yeah, but see, that's 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 how they get away with it because you know I'm on the public airwaves. I know what my standards are supposed to be. Nobody enforces those standards. I was telling the audience yesterday how proud I used to be to have my broadcast license, and I used to have to put it up on the wall. And when license renewal time came up, the whole radio station there's a lot of camaraderie because you're trying to get your public service, uh, you know, files in order, and everybody's you know trying to make. Uh, you know, the license renewal, and there's a big party at the end of it when you get your license. They don't even do it anymore. I, I, you don't even have to have a license to broadcast anymore. That, uh, you know. yeah, they, uh, well, you know, and what happens is that uh, there's, uh, that means there's no public input uh, anymore. No, and, no whatsoever. And then when you do the pay-per-view thing uh, and you stand on the fact that, you know, people pay, you know, for cable service, therefore we're not public airwaves, we're privately owned airwaves, but, uh, and there's been no legislation to, to you know, well, determine what the hell they really are. Well, and, and there needs to be, and here's, here's a point to consider, and I'll get back into the House in a minute. The, the defense authorization bill is coming up, and I'm going to try to get into the debate moment early, but here, here's something to think about. Uh, the concentration of power in the media is a real problem for the democracy because it limits the number of voices that are needed to be able to create the kind of debate that, that, makes, a, that makes for a free society and keeps it healthy. We, we have uh, a, a tremendous concentration with you know, fewer and fewer uh, corporations owning broad areas of radio and television stations and even integrating it with newspaper interests. 